Historical School of Ross in 1480 with publication of Fred Richlis and Wilhelm Rochelle. Second ended in 1917 when Gustav Smaller died. By then, economists in general had absorbed some of the ideas of the school and the school no longer existed as a distinct entity. Then German historical economists were generally critical of classical economics. Okay, I will continue with historical background. After the Napoleonic Wars, 1830 until 1832, Germany was divided into 39 separate states and most of them are monarchical and undemocratic. Second, many German demanded unification and constitution reform but the quest for national unity was frustrated for half a century. Third, the Germanists struggled against Napoleon and had aroused patriotism and nationalism emotion. Okay, for Prussia, Prussia is the largest, richest and most militaristic and most powerful state in Germany and Prussia also dominated the century. Foreign and native conserv conservatives saw Prussia and as a defensive wall against democracy and socialism. Okay. Advanced social legislation enacted by Bismarck expressed the paternalism of the monarchy and evoked loyalty and patriotism among the German workers. Bismarck breaks that in Germany the kings made the revolution. German historical school defended and rationalized the German way of life by questioning the historical relevance of the British classical economic doctrine by Lazarus Fair. British theories were objectively inapplicable to the German situation. Competition and freedom of enterprise were restricted in German, Germany. Okay, for mercantilist regulations still persisted in Germany at least until the formation of empire in 1871 long after they had disappeared from the British scene. For example, Fred Rich, uh, Fred Rich List suggested a high tariff against import of manufacturing goods to protect newly emerging domestic industry in fund industry. Germany that give birth to Germany's Ger, Germany school was divided with and primarily agriculture. This situation led to the incorporation of the spirit of nationalism, patriot, patriot, patriotism, militarism, paternalism and massive government intervention to change the pattern and promote industry growth. Because Germany of the middle 19th century was far behind England in the development in, of industry, its economies reasoned that government assistance was required for it to catch up. Okay, I will continue with major tenet. For major tenet, I have four, four principles. First, evolutionary approach to economies. Evolutionary approach to economics. Okay, next I will continue with major tenet. For major tenet, have four principles. For first principle is evolutionary approach to economics. Apply a dynamic evolutionary perspective in its study of society, concentrated on cumulative development and growth. Analogy sometimes drawn to Darwin evolutionism in biology. Born to develop, develop to grow, grows to finally decay, finally decay to dies. Society is constantly changing. What is relevant economic doctrine for one country at a particular time may be irrelevant for another country or another age. This relativistic approach was especially useful in attacking classical economy as being unsuitable for Germany. For second major tenets, emphasize on positive role government. Germany historical school was nationalistic while classical economy was individualistic and cosmopolitan. The state of Germany fostered industry, transportation and economic growth. In the process of defending a unified economy, it was easy to develop 
and ardent nationalistic glorification of the state. Historical school give great prominence to the need for state intervention in economic affairs and stress that the community has interests of its own that are quite distinct from those of the individual. For the inductive historical approach, emphasize the importance of studying the economy inductive or historically, for example, from part to the whole, from particular to general, from fact to theories, because economic and other social phenomena are interdependent, political economy cannot be treated adequately except in combination with other branches of social science. In undertook massive inductive studies during primary school material and studying changing social institutions. This historical school claimed that its historical method allowed it to study all the force of an economic phenomenon, all the faces of economic behavior, not merely their economic logic. Today, the historical inductive method has become generally accepted as complementary to marginalist abstract deductive method. For Ford, advocacy of conservative reform, political economy must not merely analyze motive that prompt economic activity but must weigh and compare the moral merit of this action and their outcome. This is efficiency versus equity. It must determine a standard of the proper production and distribution of wealth so that the demand of the justice and morality are satisfied. The German state should be entrusted with the aim, amelioration of condition for the common man. German historical school promoted moderate reform that frustrated the drive for a more radical democratization of society such as promoted by socialists. Instead of the, pure, of the poor and lowly fighting and winning their own, Better for improvement, concession were given to them by a paternalistic state. And lastly, as a result, loyalty, nationalism and civility to the state were more whispered in German. This is divert the working class from extreme socialist ideology. The third major question is how did the historical school benefit? For the non historical school, the benefit is for two groups. First is member of German historical school, and the second is for dominant business, financial, and land owning group. Member of German historical school, they enjoy close and friendly relation with government. German government control most universities and smaller, known as the professor level, control majority of the academic appointment in Germany. Supporters of Australian marginalist school were excluded from university position. Second group that get benefit from the school is dominant business financial and land money group. Uh, this served them by promoting moderate reform that frustrated the drive for a more radical democratization of society or socialistic ideology. Instead of the poor and lowly fighting and winning their own battles for improvement, concessions were given to them by a paternalistic state. As a result, loyalty, nationalism, and civility to the state were more widespread in Germany. And the fourth major question is how was the historical school valid, useful, or correct in its time? Uh, the German historical school using two methods, uh, which is first one is evolutionary approach and the second is inductive method. The evolutionary approach is the approach to society and economic thought, provide a useful antidote to the expert thinking of the classical and marginal, marginalist school. Uh, the historical school was correct in its perspective that economics needed to familiarize themselves with changing history and changing environment with economic and social evolution in order to understand their present world. The second method is inductive method. 
Inductive factual studies were required for this task. Um, new theories and new ideas had to be evoked to understand new situations, and these new theories and ideas required very careful testing through the use of empirical data. The last question is which tenet of the historical school become lasting contribution? The first, the first is inductive method. Economics agree that historical and empirical data are required to explain the present, to test old theories, and to develop new ones. Nowadays, historical inductive method has become generally accepted as complementary to the deductive approach. For example, econometric analysis normally incorporates both abstract and empirical data. It's also a tax on ledger fair. This theme was the trend of the future. The members of historical school recognized that unrestricted free enterprise does not necessarily produce the best possible result for society as a whole. Now, they were right in their belief that reform can be a substitute for worse upheaval brought on by sharpening class distinctions. Hi, I will explain about the contributions in developing the ideas of German historical school. There is the three peoples in this case. The first one is the Frederick Liszt, Wilhelm Rocher, and the Gustav Kormala. In this topic, I will explain about the French Liszt, and I will separate into the two sections. It's first about the, his life and time, and the second part is a talk of economy development. Life and time. On the 1816th, Liszt become a government cult and raised to the post of minister and secretary. On the, on the 1819th, he accepted for a profession in main in administration and politics at the University of Tumingen. Then he became active in, pro in promoting a strong political and commercial union on the German state. Liszt presented a petition for a custom union to the Federal Assembly on behalf of an association of merchants and manufacturers that he has organized. On the next year, 1820, Liszt elected to his state legislatures. Liszt advocates other administrative and financial reforms that were considered very radical in, in his states. Liszt served eight years in a prison after which he was deported. On the 1825 until 1832, Liszt is lived in the United, United States and he became a farmer, generalized, and a business promoter making a losing and a fortune in coal mining. On the 1833s, Liszt, Liszt is returning to the Germanies and become an ardent advocate of a railway network for Germanies. On the next year, uh, 1834, his effort to create a German custom unions were realized in the establishment of the Zoo Wirens. On the 1846, Liszt, having an ill health, financial difficulties, and despite of the delay in the German unifications, darkness in his later days. Liszt, his committed to suicides. The next part is about the talk of economic development, and I will be split into the three points. The first point is the protection for infants industries. Liszt referred to himself in the third person in a famous work in the East is a national system of political economics. Liszt advocated free trade with Germany while championing a high tariff against import of manufacturing goods to protect newly emerging domestic industry. However, Liszt opposite protections for agriculture because this was an old and mature industry. Manufacturing required cheap food for a labor and cheap raw material. And the last one is the development of large skills. Industry through protection will enlarge the whole market for agriculture. Only after a country is industry mandatory, coal is revert to free trade. And the second point is Liz also denied Adam Smith's notion of the harmonies of interest. Again, that private interests of certain members of community do not necessarily lead to the harmony of interests of the society as a world. One person may cross by extreme promise, but if a whole nation follow the first example, 
there with no conceptions and no support in the industries. National unities, which is the result of a past developments, is necessary to the individual whose interest should be subordinate to the present to the preservations on the oneness. And the last point is about the productive power. Military preparations, war and war debt may in certain cases immensely increase the productive power of the country, for example, in the England. War expanded in the productive power so much that increased will it receive annual debt yields. Increased output produce far extended the annual interest on its largest war debt. Spending money on supplying in its army means shipping goods to the theatre of the war that ruins foreign manufacturing and injure the England's industry supermercery. Okay, now we will be looking for Wilhelm Russia. History and background of Wilhelm Russia. He was one of the founder of the Order Historical School. Russia became professor of political economy at Contingent and later Leipzig. His five volume textbook, Economic Science, took 40 years to complete from 1854 until 1894 and was widely used in German schools. His fourth volume, which 13th edition by 1878, when it was translated into English as Principle of Political Economy. The group wanted to supplement classical theory, whereas the younger historical school, which supersede entirely with historical studies and policy consideration. Although Russia repudiated the classical economy he had learned in his youth, he still built upon this idea. Next, we can see the historical method. By using the historical method from the justification of legal, political and other historical aspects, Russia tried to establish the laws of economy development. Russia opined that to objective the political economy is not to create the best possible condition, but to define the current state on which the economy has developed continuously. He added the information obtained by using the historical method, remove feelings and self-sufficiency. Now, I will explain about historical basis of productive method. He showed his interest for economic theory by including a simplified version of English classical price theory in his principal political economy. Rather than this descending abstract theory, he wanted to find historical basis. He believed that the study of contemporary facts and opinion is important to the classical deductive method. And I would like to continue with the Gustav Smoller. Gustav Smoller was the leading figure of the young, younger historical school and also a professor of political science at Hale, Strasbourg and Berlin. Schmoller was an active member of the Academy of Science and House of Lords of the Prussian Diet. Schmoller also was the founder and a major leader of a very full social politics, which is known as an Association of a Social Policy. The Association of a Social Policy advocates social legislation and helped promote the idea of a greater government activity in social and economic affairs. Schmoller wanted to develop economics exclusively on the basis of a historical monograph and declared publicly that the members of the abstract school were unfit to teach in a German university as he was, as he was so antagonistic to deductive economies. Next, what is meant by the Methodian Strait? Methodian Strait is the battle of method between the deductive method and the inductive method. It is also a famous controversy between Schmoller and the call manager from Austrian Marginalist School. Next, let me explain to you what is the deductive method. It is the analytical and abstract approach pioneered by the David Ricardo. Ricardo began with the basic premises and then used logic to deduce generalization. His tendency is to use assumption to bolster his argument. 
the method of partial equilibrium analysis championed by many members of marginalized school was useful for abstracting it from the complexity of the real world in order to better understand it. This approach, first allowing one variable at a time to change while holding all other variables temporarily constant, and enable the investigators to dissect complex phenomena one step at a time. And as for inductive method, it is emphasized the importance of studying the economy inductively or historically. For example, from part to the whole, from particulars to the general, and from facts to the theories. Because uh, economics and other social phenomena are interdependent, political economy cannot be treated adequately except for the combination with other branches of social science. Inductive study use primary sources material and study changes of social institution. Schmoller claimed that his historical school allow it to study all the forces of an economic phenomenon, all the facts of economic behavior, and not merely their economic logic. Now, let's see what is the method and truth is all about. The controversy began when the manager had published a book on a methodology that defined theoretical analysis with the deductive method and rated Schmoller's inductive method as merely secondary in importance. And according to Mangers, the historian have stepped upon the territory of our science like a foreign conqueror in order to force upon us their language and their customs, the terminology and their methods, and to fight intolerantly every branch of inquiry which does not correspond with the special method. Schmoller reviewed the book unfavorably in his George Birch and Manger replied in angry pamphlet titled Errors of Historism. When Schmoller received a copy of Manger's pamphlet for review in his George Birch, he printed an announcement that he was unable to review it because he had returned it immediately to the author. Uh, Schmoller had also printed the insulting letters to Manger that he had included with the pamphlet. And in the end, economists believe that both inductive and deductive methods are important as they normally supplement each other. Now I want to present with my part. My part is about social reform. So I want to share about Schmoller. What we know, Schmoller is one of Kreuter's economic theory. So in this part, uh, in social reform, uh, Schmoller believed that the uh, ethical value judgment uh, should be encouraged. Maybe that time, uh, justice uh, in the economic uh, system should be achieved through partnerstic policy of uh, of uh, social reform by state and all social group. Uh, so the purpose of this justice, uh, the uh, wants a more uh, equitable uh, distribution of income. So uh, another than that, Schmoller uh, accused that uh, the older historical school of attempting to apply the lessons of history uh, too quickly where they all want to massive historical studies that he and his students publish in uh, order to uh, establish an empirical basis uh, for national income theory, but they all fail to produce uh, an economic theory. Maybe the factor uh, the factors about that uh, their major contribution lay in the area of economic history. Next, this is about protectionism. Also about Schmoller. Schmoller uh, very, uh, very love and urgent about uh, advocate of retreat. So uh, Schmoller uh, decided to change his view of protectionism, uh, and then. Uh, while while uh he's very uh very very uh, very love about free trade so he favor a protective uh tariff of Germany and uh he held uh Alexander Hamilton and Friedrich List as his teachers. But uh scholars uh 
disagree or deny about the new era of protectionism because um, that time uh, uh, some uh, of economists and statesmen had been unable to understand about the agreement for free trade and then uh, he feel that tariffs are international weapons that might benefit a country if used uh, skillfully and then uh, he just did a tariff on basis of least infant uh, industry agreement but cute but he went future than that okay uh, the conclusion of this uh, chapter uh, what we can share that the German historical school arose in 19th, 18th century with the publication of uh, Friedrich List and Wilhelm Roches and ended in 1917 when uh, Gustav Schommler died. Uh, then a uh, German uh, historical school uh, in general, were critical of classical economy, uh, the, the, the abstract, deductive, uh, static, static, unrealistic, and historical qualities of uh, classical and marginalist uh, methodology, and then, uh, then, uh, and then, uh, German historical school suggest the use of evolutionary and educational uh, inductive method in economic analysis and um, is emphasize government uh, intervention in the economy through conservation reform and uh, a German historical school also uh, try to improve the situation of ordinary people by improving their health status living standard and efficiency as a factor workers so that's all from me.